Hello and welcome to this video. This video is part one of four and basically what I'm doing is this is aimed at the novice and beginners who's unfamiliarized with Camera Raw within Photoshop. Now what I'm trying to do is show people not to be worried or not to be afraid of Raw because you can get some fantastic images through it by using or throughout using RAW. So what I'm trying to do is just make it simple and easy to follow and hopefully these videos what I'm doing are going to help a lot of people. Um, so what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to show you the main menu and basically run through just a couple of them in this first one and then show you how easy it is um, to use the exposure setting, uh, recovery, fill light, backs, all basically what you see on the right hand side and what they're used for. In other tutorials we're going to use the top tabs and the tabs going across there but I'm going to do it in stages so it's easy to follow. So in this uh, tutorial what I'm going to do is do the basics of Camera Raw and then open it in Photoshop for the finished product. So just to show you how easy and simple it is and what Camera Raw can actually do. So with this image, it's a little bit dark. Um, I underexposed the image by two stops. And the reason for that is I like to try and get some detail out of the image. I'm sorry for the, um, the animal eating, but it was just a, an image that I felt that would work really well for this tutorial. So I do apologize if anybody's squeamish on, on the, uh, the bit of meat that the uh, leopards or jaguar, sorry, is eating. So what I'm going to do is, uh, first off we're going to raise the exposure and how to do that is, as you see on the right hand side of your screen, you will see all of these sliders. Now every slider uh, performs a function, it's very easy and very, very, very simple to use and all it is is move it up to the right or move it down uh, to the left. Now left is obviously going to make the image darker and right is going to make the image brighter. Now you can overexpose an image within RAW by using the slider by going up. So it's just as bad as doing it within the camera. So the best thing to do is just move it until the actual image is basically pleasing to your eye, which is for me about 105. Now that is not set in stone because it will change on every image that you get. But for this image it's worked at 105. It's a little bit blown out on the meat there, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn that back slightly, but not too much, make it about 95. And with the blacks, I want a little bit more blacks in to take off the hairs off the exposure. So I'm just going to bring that up slightly, and as you can see now, the richness and the details coming out just by doing them two sliders. That's how simple it is. If I wanted more light falling on rather than overexposing I could just bring a bit of fill light in and as you can see it'll lighten it up without overexposing the image itself but for this one I'm just going to bring just a tiny little bit in so straight away you can see a difference um, on the image it's a bit more punchier that it's brought out and all I've actually used is three sliders the exposure, fill light and the blacks that's it the other sliders around there is obviously the brightness, the contrast, the recovery, the clarity, the vibrance and saturation. The top is the white balance. So if you set your white balance say, to um, auto, then basically, and it's, it doesn't look right, you can actually change your white balance by clicking on the arrow at the side and you'll have all the same settings what you've got in the camera down on the white balance settings within Photoshop so just clicking on one of them so what's pleasing to you on your eye will help you out no end so if I did auto for instance you might not see it on this tutorial but it's warmed the picture up just slightly so I don't really want that I want it kept as shot um, because obviously there's a bit of a bluey tone to that now if I wanted the bluey tone to go out, all I've got to do is where the temperature is, I move the slider slightly up to make that a little bit more warmer, just exactly by using the temperature slider. 
uh, the tint is the same, move it up or down. I tend not to use that because once you get into that realm, it could mess up your process. And unless you know what you're doing with it realistically, I'd leave that alone. For now, the other videos will show you um, how to use it correctly. Um, the contrast obviously is self explanatory, it's just like in Photoshop, you just boost up the contrast a bit, I'll give it plus 10. And the clarity, now I know that. Um, a lot of people love using clarity and I know that Gavin Howe uses it a lot, in fact he loves it, he says it in more or less every one of his videos. And the man's right, it's a great tool to have. Um, so basically all I'm going to do is I'm just going to boost that up a little bit, just to give it a bit more um, clarity within the picture. And once you're happy with your image and everything that you've used in there which you're happy with, then basically you just click on open image. Now, I'm not going to do that just yet because I just want to th run through just quite quickly these sliders. The vibrance basically says what it is, but it, sometimes you can take a picture, it's just a little bit too colorized for the image itself. So, what the vibrance does is it will drop it down just like that. I've still got color in it, but it's not as vibrant than what it should be. But you can also move it right up as well. So that's what that slider does. For me, I'll just leave it as close to the human eye as I possibly can. And on this case, I'll leave it as zero. Saturation, obviously, that's going to add more colour and take more colour away. So with that, that's the same. Contrast, obviously, we've just done that. Brightness, well, that's self-explanatory, where basically you can move the slider up to brighten it, or you can move it back down to darken the image itself. The recovery, basically, if you're going through all the sliders, you shouldn't really need to use the recovery because you're processing the image to how you feel is pleasing to you. But sometimes you can do it, but if you click on recovery, it could just bring a bit of the old picture or a bit of the shot that we first started off by just moving the slider up or down. Uh, for me, I'm quite happy with the way I've processed this. So you've got your white balance, your temperature slider, your tint, exposure, recovery, fill light, blacks, brightness, contrast, clarity, vibrance and saturation. The final bit to it is you can also click auto, which I'm not going to do on this. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And what I mean by that is you could click auto and it could just get your picture exactly how you want it like that. Well, fantastic if it works like that. And you just need a little bit of tweaking if it does it, which is more or less used for speed. But if you shot in RAW and you want the image, work on it a little bit. And, but most of all, don't be frightened of shooting in RAW because I've just showed you how easy them sliders are and there's more to come with that. So I'm happy with this image now, so all I've got to do is click open image. It'll take a second and then it'll open up within Photoshop. Now the final prep for this is basically I'm going to go to image, adjustments and levels. Just check the levels and as you can see now the levels are okay because we've done them in Photoshop, but I'm just going to bring that down just a bit just to make sure that each end of the levels, the whiteness and the darkness is more or less leveled it off properly. Click OK and then I'm going to go back over to image, adjustments, brightness and contrast, leaving the brightness alone because we've done the exposure, we've done the fill light, we've done the blacks in RAW and we've just made the adjustments in levels itself. So there's not really no point really in lifting the brightness up within this because we've already done it twice well three times actually but what I do want to do is I'm going to give the picture a bit of a punch so I'm going to get the contrast and I'm going to lift it up to I'd say roughly about 13 click OK and then the last thing what I do with all my processing is quite straightforward go to filter sharpen unsharpen mask and like I've said in other tutorials I use the amount of 102% which is already set once you put this in. The radius at 2.5 pixels and a threshold at 4. They're the settings what I do for my images. Now people's taste, uh, some of my friends use a bit lower setting on that 
and it suits them. But for me, I want it to, um, when I print it off, I want it to look exactly like what it is on the monitor itself. And I find that that setting suits me down to the ground. Once you've done that, click OK. And that's it. That's it. So you've shot in RAW. You've opened it up in Camera RAW within Photoshop. You've done the levels. You've done the exposure. You've just moved a couple of sliders about. You've put it into Photoshop. You've adjusted the levels to make sure that everything's balanced well. You've sharpened it and given it a bit of contrast. And that's it. It's as simple as that. So I really hope that this has helped you out. I will be doing another video in RAW again to manipulate a bit more and show you how and what you can do with the other tabs and the other sliders that's in there. Um, hopefully you'll tune in again and watch the other tutorials. But for now, thanks for watching. Until next time, this is Sean. See you again. Bye.